Fraternal greetings, fraternal greetings right here, here, here. Salam to Tainayis Telin. Shalom, shalom, chabarim. And a salam to Tainayis Telin. And for this eve, the eve of the ancient, you could say, Orthodox Epiphany, right? We call it now Ethiopian, you could say, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahido Epiphany. I right? have the true church and the professing church. Here, here, here. Happy, happy, happy. Here we're at the eve of Epiphany, of the ancient, we can say, connected with nativity. Here, in Kwan, le le detu, le baal, le dechina, adresa wo. This is more the formal, we can say, greetings in the Lisan and Negus and Neges, in the language of the King of Kings, of Kadamawi Hala Selassie, in Kwan, le le detu, be al, be. Dechna adresa wo, or in Kwan le le detu baal le dechna adreso adreso. Here, here, this is to say, bringing out the sense of um, happy lidet or happy nativity. Often nowadays, it'll be called like you know, Ethiopian Christmas. This is how it's referred to, right? Especially in the translation. You know, from high degrees to low degrees, from the east to the west, as it were. So it's referred to as Christmas, or many will say Ethiopian Christmas. And the greeting, one of the greetings, Melkam Lidet, more correctly, Lidet too, Lidet too, bringing out the sense of congratulations. He has brought you safely. Bedechna, bedena, bedena, bedechna, bedechna adreso. He has brought you safely to the feast. So right here, 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 the ledetu baal, baal. Very interesting phrase right there, baal. Ledetu baal. Want a reason on that, brothers? Chavarim. What does it mean, Chavarim? The baal in the Ethiopic, the baal is a feast. A Baal. Now, when we say Baal, right? Baal, even in the Hebrew, Baal is husband, right? First, the husband, but the true sense of Baal or Baale, like owner, but in the Ethiopic sense, the Baal is feast. Now, you might be thinking about the English translations from the Hebrew and the KJV Bibles, but what we need to do is study the etymology. But here, Ethiopically speaking, the Baal is the feast, is a feast, a feast, a festival. So here we have the feast, the festival of Lidetu, Lidetu, Lidetu of his birth and we're speaking of Getachin, Medchanetachin, Memherachin. <laughs> we're speaking of Jesus Christos, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christos or Hebraically Adonainu Yeshua, Yeshua Hanotri, Yeshua of Nazareth, Yenazretu Jesus who is known as Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ. So here, the greeting is here in the season of time. And so this is actually the most correct reference for this in studying the ancient manuscripts, the ancient trod of the true church in the professing church, that the 6th of January, January 6th, and more elaborated or celebrated on January 7th. So here we at the eve Right, the eve of what is referred to as Ethiopian Christmas, so to speak, so to speak. But truly, it is the feast of his birth, right? And the ancient church, the true church tried, and the early, we say church tried, this day, the 6th or the eve, the eve, right, before the day, January 7th, referred to as Epiphany, even to this very day it's still referred to in other, we can say in other churches, right, as Epiphany. What is Epiphany, right? What does Epiphany mean? What's the connection with January 7th and the visit of the Magi, those who are called and referred to as the Magi? And it's all in the greeting, even in the greeting right here, the full of full of the greeting, the short greeting usually is Melkam Lidet, Melkam Lidet. More properly tweaking the shorter greeting, Melkam Lidetu. Melkam, Melkam, 
beautifully good Lidet too. Lidet to his Lidet and Lidet brings out the sense of nativity. And the word nativity in the English comes of course from like the Latin and um, natio or natio, natio, we get native in the words. That means really simply put birth. Basically it means birth. Nativity means, you know, the birth relating to the birth. So here we have Epiphany, the visit of the Magi or the wise men, as they are referred to in the translation, the visit of the wise men, right? And we also refer to this as Orthodox, it's called Orthodox Christmas, or for many of I and I might know it as, we say Ethiopian Christmas. Ethiopian Christmas, ones might say, is on the 7th of January, right? Not the 25th of December. But what does this day and time really signify? Right? What, what is it? What was it to those in the first time? In other words, what did this day, this time, this Lidet, Lidet to, right? Lidet to, what did it signify? What did it refer to? And the scripture gives us powerful clues, but various traditions as we receive certain traditions here, right? In this Western Gentile world, Anglo-American world, white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant Christianity, whitewashed Christianity, there's many other traditions that we are more familiar with right we've been more familiar with and we're learning about this so it's important for us to compare but also to contrast and to point to primary references primary sources or, or resources rather primary resources so we can grow in grace and in the knowledge so first thing first right here just the greeting here in this season in this time in kwan lelidetu baal bedechna daresawo now adaresawo adaresawo is more of a polite construction so this would be like giving a greeting we could say in the most polite sense right the polite sense if i was speaking to uh, say an individual male i might say you know adarese <laughs> i might say adarese or adaresish Adaresachu, speaking to you all, Adaresachu. So the greeting would be in Kwan. Lelidetu Baal Bedechna Adaresachu. Adaresachu, like you all. Congratulations. In Kwan, congratulations. He has brought you, has brought you, caused you to reach. Adarese, Darese, right? Darese, similar to the Hebrew, um, Darosh, Darash, Darash. We talk about Darash, Darasha, Darese in the Ethiopic sense to reach or like to arrive, right? So congratulations, he has brought you or caused you to arrive. Bedechna, 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 dechna. Or in the present uh, um, speech, denna is kind of contracted, denna. So when we say denna, 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 right? You know, denna, denna, denna. So dechna in the more archaic older sense, dechna, dechna. And dechna is one of the words that would be equivalent from the Hebrew or compared to the Hebrew of like shalom, right? Of shalom, shalom, safeness, peace, but peace in the sense of safeness, well. Dechna, dechna. And the dechna connection with medhanit. Medhanit, the word Ethiopically for savior, Medhanit, Medane, some might say Medane, in the modern sense, like Medane Alem, the Medane, the Medhane Alem, the Medhane, the savior, right, of the world, and this is whose Lidet, right, we observe here, like as a Zikaron, Metasebia, as a memorial remembrance, right here, 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 and it's all in the greeting. Melkam, Lidetu. So we want to emphasize right here for the Chabarim, the brothers and sisters, as we grow in grace and the knowledge of Getachin, Jesus Christos, of Adonainu, Yeshua, HaMushia. Give us the teaching of His Majesty. Because we don't want no devil's philosophy. Now, we've been exposed to a lot of devil's philosophy regarding Christmas. You know, what's called Christmas, Santa Claus, you know, all these kind of... Um, fables and speculations that have been kind of superimposed right that have been superimposed on the real meaning I, and i know what the gatherings for so what's the gathering what is the gathering for right here especially on the eve the most isla or holy time of a season and this is 
inclusive even of the we could say the first of the feasts and festivals really is the Shabbat, the Shabbat, Shabbat time, the Senbet, right? It's really the first of them when we study in the order, right? Because the Sabbath is like the key. The Sabbath is the key. The Sabbath is the key for the festivals, the feasts, the holy seasons, the holy time. It's it's like the um so to speak, the Holy Grail, the Shabbat, the Senbet, the Holy Grail of of holidays, of observances, right? When we set it apart. And what's interesting that even in the scripts, the holy days, the appointed times, the Mo'adim, as we call in the Hebrew, the Mo'adim, Yahuwah, right? The feast of Jehovah, the Mo'adim, the seven appointed times feast, which really begins as we move forward to like the April, May, to the springtime, to the beginning of the Hebrew, we could say churchical or ecclesiastical year, right? beginning then and then going all the way to roughly the fall season september october this is where like the adis the adis ahmed the adis ahmed ethiopically speaking the new, new year also rosh hashanah right so here 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 we're in the winter moons we're in the winter moon so some important questions come up as they should as we grow in grace those questions come up if we really don't have those questions we might not really be um, growing in a sense. I'm not saying you always got to have questions, but questions kind of also point out as you begin to become familiar or you go over certain subject matters that you're studying, the questions become important, right? Especially if they are not just saying your own questions, but if you're looking at the, the evidence, you're listening, you're hearing, you're paying attention, and you're saying, well, if that is so, then how is this related to that? Right? And if that is not so, well, then how is this different as we learn, as we grow, right? To make these adjustments, right? To grow in grace, and repeating this, to grow in grace and in the knowledge. Because the three W's, what? Watch, right? Work and witness, right? Watch, pay attention, right? That's the price. What's the price of the truth? The tr price of the truth, the price of the truth is to pay attention. That's the price of the truth, you know, to pay attention. Not just attention to this vlog video, but please, you know, do pay attention to this vlog video, but also pay attention, just to pay attention, right? Just pay attention, just be mindful. I think they use that terminology nowadays. So here we're at the six. So what does the six signify? Is this, are we saying that this is the time when Yeshua, the time of the year that he was born, born? Some think so. I must admit that some nowadays, in the latter days, even the Messiah himself said what would go on in the latter times and the Holy Spirit, the Memphis Kedus, the Ruach HaKadosh has also testified to us in the latter days and the latter times. There would be a falling away right, from the faith, the true faith, the Hymeno. There would be a falling away from the teaching. There would be a falling away from the truth. That's so how we are to contend, right? To contend earnestly for the faith, as the scripture says, Yehuda, Judah, or Jude, as he's known. Also, it's Judas, but that's a different, different Judas than, than the one who betrayed the Moshia, right? But Jude or Judah, Yehuda, in that document, that testimony, it says we are to contend earnestly, right, for the faith that was once delivered. Right, once delivered to the saints, to the set apart ones, to the Kedusan, in the Amharic, the Kedusan, the holy ones, or the Kedoshim, Kedoshim in the Hebrew, Chabarim, the Kedoshim, set apart, the Hasidim, also the Chased, Chasidim, right? Those who have received Chesed, that loving kindness, that loving favor, that mercy, the Hasidim. Right. So the faith that was once delivered, what was the faith that was once delivered? So nowadays what we hear, we should make a clear, um, you know, note right, to self right, that a lot that we hear or have heard or have become familiar with or have been programmed, you know, as we program in this system, you know, like this, this world, we're in the world, not of the world. We have to confront that. We have to confront Right? The lies, the fables, the, you know, the errors that have crept in if we are to get to the truth. 
if we are to get to the root. It's like if somebody pours concrete, you know, over, you know, the reddish brown, the rich agricultural ground and everything, and they pour concrete over it and put buildings and put edifices over it. We're going to have to tear all that down and pull up the concrete to get to the soil, back to life, back to reality, back to the earth, the groundation. Right? So getting to the groundation, we have to recognize, first of all, you know, the, the cover up. They say that the cover up is worse than the lie. So that means that there are cover ups regarding the birth of the Moshiach, the birth of Christ. Many people believe and even many Orthodox might believe that when we observe this as um, the birth of Christ or Ethiopian, what's referred to as Ethiopian Christmas or Orthodox uh, Christmas, that this is saying that this is the time, the actual time of the year that the ancients believed that Yeshua was born in the winter time. Now, of course, January 7th is not, <laughs> January 7th is not December 25th. January 7th is not December 25th. However, right, it's still in the winter season, the winter time. The winter season, we go to scripture, biblically, right, look at the, time of the year the calendar right the season that this would be in according to scripture also ethiopically which is so very interesting that the ethiopians right for more than two thousand years keep the same sort of uh calendar well the timing right when we talk about time they have kept to that ancient time where it says that antichrist will seek to change time and laws right but we see that Ethiopia, Ethiopically, according to the faith, the, the, the King of Kings of the King of Kings Christ, the true church. We like to refer to the true church when we speak about the true elements of the church. We say the true church and the professing church. Just a note that you probably heard me, if you listen to a few of the videos and watch a few of the videos, you probably heard me say that the true church, right? The true church and the professing church, right? So I'm referring to the true church and the professing church, that first is the church of Philadelphia just for ones who might be interested for more scriptural reference, Philadelphia, brotherly love, you'll find more of that. We say that's the church of his majesty. He who have the key of great King David, right? But the ancients did not believe a lot of things that we have been made to believe, right? We've been made to believe a lot of things. This is not the season and the time. This is not to say that, this is not when the, when the, the shepherds visited Yeshua, in the manger yes we can recall that and this is a time to recall what occurred months earlier so this season this time the 6th of january let's ask the question is the 7th of january ethiopian christmas we don't know what we're going to call this right here we're just going to let's just go through the subject matter and hopefully we can get this up you know for ones and ones in this season this time Right, since we're already in this season, this time probably we'll share some of the audio if we're able to, you know, on on the podcast. Right, seeing that we're right here at the sixth, right, the sixth of January in this new um, so-called Gregorian, right, this new Gregorian Pope Gregory, right, more like, but Pope Gregory New Year, right, we're in this New Year season this time, January six, and January six is the eve of what is often and commonly called Ethiopian Christmas or Orthodox Christmas, but actually the six here, here, here is Epiphany, right? So what is Epiphany? So here, let's see if we still have this, um, let me see if, see if I still have this open to share with you. We just did a really a simple, a brief right here. You can see this right here, Thursday. So here, this is speaking about where we're at presently, just marking this for the history. Thursday, January 6th, right? Thursday, January 6th, Epiphany 2022. Now, I don't know how many of these are going to open up. Let me see if this opens up. Yes, it does. All right, so... What does epiphany mean in simple terms? It's an appearance or manifestation, especially of a divine being. Now, what we need to do, of course, take note, um, fellow disciples, Dek Mezamorit, um, Talmudim, the Talmudim is the word for disciples. Take note, take note. Let's look up the etymology, the etymology of epiphany. Can we note that right there for the record, the etymology? Because looking at the etymology will show us how the ancients understood it. Because we hear the word epiphany, but for us it has no real connection 
with we can say um, like the Greco-Roman so-called roots or the Greek and Roman Latin later day roots and the roots of this this um, this um, Gentile world system when you talk about the end of the times of the Gentiles this Gentile world system my, this white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Anglo-American world system this more than 400 year world system I, this, this particular world system that we are in right here 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 has everything to do with the Greco-Roman right? the Greeks and the Romans is based on the Greek and the Romans so a note what's the etymology of epiphany I say that because I'm reading a kind of simple terms definition I think it's from where is it Merriam-Webster right so different dictionaries will give their own kind of gloss like a gloss on the meaning but we need to get to the real roots, right? To the real roots of what epiphany, right? What does epiphany mean, right? And so, oh, we didn't finish reading it. Okay, that's, a, that's right there. And then it says um, one, the one, where it says one, a usually sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature of meaning of something so in a nowadays sense when somebody says something's an epiphany i just got an epiphany you hear people say well it's a sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature essential nature nature of something of meaning something of importance second second entry an intuitive grasp an intuitive grasp of reality through something such as an event something happens in this event really helps you in the innermost of the inner sense really to get a grasp, a hold of what's really, really real through that particular event, that particular something, that particular happening. Usually, right, simple, it's a simple and a striking event. So we can see, or we should be able to see or, or understand, right, understand how this is related with January 6th. And now January 6th is the eve, and the eve is the holiest part of any of the holy seasons according to the precepts beginning with shabbat the senbet the sabbath it's the eve the eve is the most important time so we say the holy day or this day say january 7th that means that the eve the sixth is the holiest part and by even tradition and many no doubt are observing that even right now they are going whether to church or they have fellowship and it all depends on like what's going on with this whole covid thing and everything but many are going to worship Right? You say worship or praise or fellowship or, you know, gathering. They gather, right, for the day beginning at the evening. And scripturally, biblically, the true keeping of time. And we talked about the times and laws. They've sort of changed times and laws. And this change of times and laws, that helps to make people believe in things like Santa Claus, the bunny rabbit, Easter eggs, and all these other things. Right? Or believe in a, a counterfeit version of something true, all right? So what we're seeking to do right here in this vlog and vid is to remind the Habarim who already have been studying and growing to know and also to give some hints, as it were, to others who, who might not have that, um, you know, that, that input, you know, that awareness, you know, yet, but hopefully will. But they know that something, 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 something is wrong. Okay, so some of this doesn't come up right here. Let's see if we can. There we go right here. Say, why is the epiphany on January 6th? Now, Ethiopically speaking, so far, I have not come across this directly related to epiphany in the Western Gentile, the other church sense. But it appears that this, and that's, that's an interesting word, the word appears. Right? That, that has a lot to do with epiphany. And to get into the etymology of epiphany, we first going to go to its roots, usually the Greek or the Roman roots. And then we'll get into even the Ethiopic and the Hebrew connection. Right? Because when we look at what the word means, and then the sound of epiphany, epiphany, right? like panim, 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 il panim which is a word or expression in the Hebrew, like face to face, like when Moshe spoke and, you know, communicated with Hashem, you know, with Yahweh, hey, he spoke to him face to face in, in, in Mount Sinai, in Mount Sinai. But Epiphany is the first major Christian event of the year. Now, we have the pause right here. 
Now, the first thing by reading this here, you should take note of, this is written from a Western Gentile church. This is written from the Western Gentile church, like a Romanist and, a, and the Roman church, the Vatican, Vaticanian, the Roman church, Catholic church, and also from a, a Protestant perspective. This is written from a Protestant perspective because for us, according to the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrew, either way we look at it, right, Ethiopically, we're already in the new year, and we look at it Hebraically, Judaically, we're already on the new year. We've been in the new year, you know, for the past, we could say, few, you know, few months. Right? We've already been in the new year. But in the Western Gentile world, when we come to January, <laughs> January, right, 6, right, this is falling on January 6 each year. So this same day on our calendar does not begin or does not fall or occur at the beginning of the year or according to our time. Remember, this is about the time, right? It says the Antichrist and Daniel, they shall seek to change times and laws. Although it might seem simple, a simple thing. Oh, times and laws. Okay, that's not that big. That's not that important. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. In fact, there's a particular video, vlog, I don't know if it's still up there, if it's still out there on the tube, on YouTubes. Um, it is called um, Why the Gregorian Calendar is So Evil. Some of the Gregorian Calendar is so evil. I think it's like Why the Gregorian Calendar is so evil. I would definitely recommend for ones and ones to, you know, get a get a view, get a hear, check it out for themselves. Also, you know, if you can, save it. It's a very, very good video, really presents why the Gregorian calendar. So we're breaking this down right here because even for something so simple right there, if we break it down and understand it, when they say Epiphany is the first major Christian event of the year, they can't be speaking according to the true church and the professing church, the church of he who have the key of great King David. Right? They cannot be speaking in terms of, you know, the church of the, we could say the Ethiopic, <laughs> the Ethiopian Hebrew, Black Madonna and Child. They, they can't be speaking in that terms, right? Because the new year has already begun several months ago, right? According to, you know, September, you know, we could say September, Ethiopically speaking, right? And usually Hebraically, Judaically speaking, it's right around that time, but it's more according to the lunar while the Ethiopic is according to the solar, but it's still in the same fall season, right? And the fall season, circa September, points to the true time of the birth of Yeshua HaNotri, right? Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? Of Jesus Christos, of Jesus Christ. So the true birth season or time of Yeshua corresponds with the seventh or the fall festival. Right, what is known as the Fall Festival Hebraically. The Fall Festival, when we say Fall Festival, festival that occurs in a time of the year that's like the end of the year, just, just when winter is about to come in and, and summer, you know, it has already gone out, is going out. When we're coming into this, just before the winter moons, the winter months, right? The harvest, also called the Latter Harvest Festival, also known as Tabernacles. So if one's asked, well, when was Yeshua HaMoshiach born? Right? According to the scripture, according to history, according to the facts, this would be Feast of Tabernacles, corresponding even with the finding of the True Cross and Ethiopian New Year season. According to the Ethiopian Kingdom of God, right? the Ethiopian Kingdom of God, order and church, churchical teaching, we, we see that in the ancient Ethiopic church, September 11th, right? On the usual years, leap years would be the 12th, but usually September 11th was observed in the ancient church as the combined births of Kedist Dingamarium, of Kedist Mariam, of, of Holy Mary, right? You know, or Saint Mary, as we would say, you know, Kedist Mariam in uh, Lijwa and her Lij, Lijwa and her son, her child. Jesus Christos, Getachen, Medchanetachen. So then we have, well, the question, well, if he was born, right, during the, the Hebrew, Judaic, like the fall festival, Sukkot, Tabernacles, the Feast of, during the Feast of Tabernacles, let's put it like that, right, during the Feast of Tabernacles, I right? strike out that word fall, you know, like the Feast of Tabernacles, 
I done the Feast of Tabernacles, which we have September, roughly September, October, November, December. And then we come over here to January. Then why, according to the ancient church, why was Epiphany observed in connection right, with the Magi, right, with the Magi or with the wise men, right, and with the birth of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christus, according to scripture. Why? Right? These are the keys. These are the keys that explain, explain why the Ethiopian, the Orthodox, and the other churches that observe the 6th of January are observing 6th and the 7th, the 6th Epiphany, and then like the Ethiopian church, the Lidet or Lidetu, his birth, right? Melkam Lidetu, Melkam Lidetu, Enquan Le Lidetu Baal, Bedechna Adereso, 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 Congratulations, he has brought you, he has caused you to arrive safely, Bedechna, Bedenna, right? to the feast of his birth, to the Ledetu Baal, right, the Ledetu Baal. So what was the Ledetu Baal? What was the nativity, We're speaking about the nativity feast, right? And do we have any evidence, right, that the early, we can say the first churches or the churches of the first century, the early church observed this, and that the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church and the other Mia Fasite um, sister churches of those five, um, we can say the Oriental churches observing this, even continue to observe this is of great significance. Why this is of great significance? Because this is a key, right, in putting together the true narrative and the true time Right? Time and law. Remember? Time and law. So we first of all look at this time, asking a few questions about, okay, why, you know, why, you know, who, what, where, why, when, how. So let's just touch a little bit more on Epiphany and then hopefully get into a little bit of the wise men connection because the significance of, of Lidet the significance of Lidet, as we refer to it Ethiopically, is the visit of the wise men, the visit of the Magi, as recorded, let's state this right here, as recorded within the Gospels, as we have it in the Gospels, in the Brit Hadasha, in the Adis, Adis, Hadish, Hadish, Adis Kidan, Brit Hadasha. Right, Hadasha, Adis, Hadish. You can see even the Afro-Semitic links right there. So here it says, just going on a little bit more, it says it marks two important parts of the Christian story. The first being, now here's where we differ. Here is where the, 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 the differing is, right? Between the early church, the first church, right? The church of he who have the key of great King David and many of the other churches, especially the Western Gentile, the Romanist and the Protestant and the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant churches, right? They say that this is first of all being Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ's baptism in the river Jordan, which is considered the manifestation of, the, of his divinity as God came to earth, right? But then notice something, as we go further down here and we look at the definition for epiphany, Right, which corresponds to the six. Now the six, right, is the eve of the seventh, right? The seventh of January. According to the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, according to the true church of the King of Kings, Katamawi Hala Selassie, the true church and the professing church, this day, this season, this time is connected with Lidet Lidetu. It's connected with his birth. So when we say Lidet, we're really referring to the Afro-Semitic term that means birth, right, or nativity. So here it says epiphany, right, the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles as represented by the Magi. Now, interesting. Is that interesting? Because in the previous um, little definition entry, just in a quick search on the Google, they, they were talking about the baptism, the baptism. And this is when the, the divinity came to earth. So we see that we're getting different kind of like opinions, right? And looking at the different opinions, and then what we're gonna do is then, let's say, take all the opinions, 
and say, well, which opinions or beliefs or theories or ideas are backed up by, first of all, any scriptural evidence, and then we find other, we could say, extra biblical or extra scriptural evidence to back up that interpretation. So here we have the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles, the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles as represented by the Magi. The Magi is another way to refer to the um, wise men. Does Magi even appear in the Bible? I think the scripture says the wise men. Somehow that, that terminology, I think, has, has crept in. We'll go just check that out again. Let's go to the next. So the two things that are pointed out right here is the festival commemorating the Epiphany on January 6th. So the Epiphany in the first instance, right, in this primary instance is related to the wise men. The Epiphany, right, the Epiphany. Notice this right down here. Right down here, they define this. Is this the wiki page? Yeah, it's the wiki page. Epiphany, also known as theophany, right? Or theophany, right? Theophany, theophany. Theophany in Eastern Christian, right? In the Eastern Christianoi, the Eastern um, Christian traditions is a Christian feast day that celebrates the revelation, the revealing of revelation, reveal the truth, right? Theophany, the Theophany. Interesting how the revelation of the birth of the Moshiach, of Jesus Christos, like the song by um, Bob Marley and the Whalers, BMW, but Hannah Salah says, Revelation reveals the truth. And then what's the next verse? Like, Revolution. I remember the whole Herod, Herod situation and the king. Why right? we come to see the king, you know, the king of the Jews, of the Yehudim. Right, and what this cause, right? What this cause, revolutionary. So this revolution, revelation, the revelation, the revolution connections also there. In the reality, theophany. So the theophany, right? An appearing. So what we have is an appearing. The idea of epiphany is an appearing, right? Because the wise men, who are often referred to as being three, even though from the scriptures, from the Bible, from the Brit Chadasha, the Adis Kidan, from the New Testament, we don't have any such numbering that there was only three. It doesn't tell us that there was only three, right? There could have been two, right? But most likely, right, there were at least three or more, right? Tradition says there were three, right? Just to point that out right there. Right? Tradition says they were three. Maybe there were three. Maybe there were more than three. Right? However, the scripture does not directly state. So that is still something under research right there. Right? Whether there were more than three, whether there was only three. Right? We'll just accept right now what has, what has been communicated to us from our tribe, from our tradition, according to right? he who have the key of great King David and that true church and the professing church, the church of Philadelphia, the true church of his majesty. The true church of his majesty is not just the Orthodox Church of Ethiopia, but it's the Orthodox Church of Ethiopia that keeps the teaching of his majesty right? over those thousands of years, even presently, the true teaching. Give us the true teaching, because even amongst the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, some things have crept in, as is obvious, since the godless creeping coup against the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David against Ketamawi, Haile Selassie. So just to point that out right there, but there's a true tradition, a true teaching. Right? This is why study is so important, so we can recognize when even the present church Right? The present Ethiopian Orthodox Church may be teaching or communicating a scriptural, spiritual truth based on the same faith, hymenote of the King of Kings, and that more than 3,000 years, right? at least 2,000 years to the time of the Messiah Yesu's testimony. Right? So here, just moving forward, of God, the revelation, theophany, the revealing of God, of Elohim, as we can say, of Elohim incarnate or of Emmanuel. This is where the connection of Emmanuel, 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 Emmanuel in Hebrew, Emmanuel means um, with us, Emmanuel, right? It is a part of speech in the Hebrew, Emmanuel. If we say Emmanuel, with us, then El. El is to say the Almighty, El, El of the Elohim, El, 
El is Hebrew contracted from the older Shemitic Chayil, Chayil. So El is the Hebrew, right, contracted, right, from the older Chayil, Chayil, right? So El, El, power, might, right, in the archaic Hebrew sense of the Almighty. So the revelation, theophany, revealing, seeing, appearing of the power, the Imanu El incarnate. Incarnate means in the carnal. It means in the flesh. In the flesh, right? So when we speak about like God in the flesh, the ideas of God in the flesh, so to speak, this is connected with the name Emmanuel. This is where we get the name Emmanuel. You know, people ask a little funny questions, say, well, how come he wasn't called Emmanuel? Well, we have to read the scripture. Let's read the scripture. Do you read the Hebrew? Do you understand the Hebrew sense? See, the Hebrew sense for a Hebrew speaker, or we say a Yehudi speaker, especially of the first and the early centuries, is very clear what the gospels, the good news, are saying. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, one who understands is going to accept it. You may understand what I'm saying, and you say, well, yeah, well, well, yeah, he's making sense here, he's making sense there, but I don't accept it. You could always choose. Right? One can always choose. Right? So, but they will still understand clearly what's being said. Sadly, unfortunately, you know, because all this confusion, right? All this, all these, all these make believes that have been, you know, feel goods that have been superimposed on top of, right? The evidence, the facts, scripturally, biblically, so forth and so on. So, anyway. Brothers and sisters, let's just seal up right here. This is kind of just a, 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 a greeting. It's a greeting video as well as to touch on just a few of the basic, the basic established points, right, concerning what and why when we say January 7th, but the 6th, just to, just to emphasize again the key of the 6th, right? So, so the Ethiopian epiphany, you know, the epiphany nativity, and the kind of a true Christmas, the true Christmas connection, the reason for the season. Also, just before we go forward, it's sometimes called Three Kings Day, right? So it's from this idea of Three Kings Day, right? So let's do the research on that. Don't have the time to get into the research right here, but that's a note too. So this day, this time is referred to as Epiphany, right? It's also referred to as Theophany or Theophany. Right? It's also referred to as Three Kings Day. And in some traditions, get this right here, this is interesting, it's celebrated as Little Christmas. So with the Ethiopian connection here that this, you know, is called, notice this, notice this, check this out, brothers and sisters. Which church, which church, right, observes this season and this time, right, as Christmas? Or which churches? Right, the Oriental Orthodox churches. I, I, I put that there. Not Eastern. Eastern is just a general from the West. From the West, they see everybody in the East as being all the East. But when you get in the East, you got to recognize who are the Oriental. When you say Orient, means East in another sense in the English. Not to get all into that, but the Oriental churches are basically five churches: the Ethiopian Church, the Coptic Church, the Egyptian Church, the Armenian Church, the Syria, the, 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 the Syrian Church, and also the Indian Church. These are the five sister churches of antiquity. These five churches are like the branch in the branch that the that the um, Betula. Betula in the heavens is the Virgo or the Virgin in the heavens. In the Hebrew, we say Betula. They say Virgo. She holds, right? She holds a branch. Right? Remember, said so that man who is the branch. Remember, that's in the scripture. That's in the prophets, the Hebrew prophets. Right? Right? This man who is the branch, and then we see in the heavens, right? Right? The heavens declare. <laughs> Right? I do declare. Let's declare what the heavens declare. So when we look at even the heavenly signs, remember what it says. It says that there were these wise men, right? And they were journeying, right? It says, as they journeyed from where? From the east. Remember what the scripture says Hashemayim, Mesaprim, Kobod, El. The heavens declare the glory, declare the glory of El, of El. Here's what's, here's what's interesting, the El. The El here in um, Psalm in Psalm 19, 
Now, we, we point to that because when you look at this is the good book for the Habarim, check it out. We have that in reprint. Check out our reprint as well. Also want to share the forward because there's a prophecy there concerning the birth of Lidz Tafari, of Lidz Tafari, the man child. It's in the book called um, Witness to the Stars, Witness of the Stars by by um, um, E.W. Bullinger. Right? And we did a reprint on it. And while doing the reprint of that particular book and going over it, we observed that um, Edward Bullinger had witnessed that heavenly sign. Because the book is actually was written 1891. I think it was 1891, 1892, roughly around that time it was published, but, it, but in the 1890s. And he and they witnessed a very interesting heavenly arrangement of stars. Right, the heavenly inter, um, arrangement of stars, and the only other time that this particular arrangement in the heavens was like this, according to known um, astrology and astronomy and the sciences, was at the birth of Jesus Christos, of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua Hamoshiach. Right. So that was interesting because that's the that right there is a heavenly signs, the heavenly signs concerning the birth of Lidz Tafari, a.k.a. Ras Tafari, a.k.a. Kadamawi, Haila Selassie. So where the scripture says, Samayat, ye gziabi herin kubr, yinagaralu, the heavens declare. Right? That's from the Metz of Kedus of his Imperial Majesty Authorized Advised and Hark Bible, the HSV, the Haile Selassie version, speaking of the heavens, declare the glory, right, of here we have the Ethiopic divine, we say name of Shem, we have Exiavihir, the seven letter name of he who be who he be, one of the primordial names of he who be who he be. But working our way up from the Hebrew right here, Hashemai Misaprim. Kobod El, Kobod, Kobod El. You know, we have the name Imanu, 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 with us in the Hebrew. With us is El. Why is that significant? Well, that's significant, right? Because the Imanu El, for those who received, those who were um, 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 faithful, we could say, you know, um, those who were of the faithful, right? The faithful receive this because they recognize, as let's go over here, right here, just to connect the dots, right? We'll like to speak, but also show those who are witnessing what the evidence says right here, right? You see it right there where it says a, a Christian feast day, we can say Nazarene, before it was Christian, it was Nazarene, right? And it connected with the Yehudim, the Jews, the Judahites, but it says a Christian feast day that celebrates, but, but Yehudi and other nations. So when it calls the three kings Gentiles, they were not Israelites. That's, that's all that basically means. They were not Israelites. So here we get the witness from Yehudi, from Jew Yehudim, right? The Ehud Yehudim, and we get it from the Goyim, from Gentiles, represented by these three kings right or represented generally scripturally by the wise men but it states that it celebrates the revelation and this what kind of revelation is this this is a theophany theophany and appearing of theo theo in the greek is god as they use that term for god so right theo right a revelation and appearing right of el el right so we have the heavenly sign what were the wise men looking at what were they looking at? They were looking at the heavens, right? The star, right? It talks about a star, a star. So witness, right? Witness of the stars, the LOJ reprint. You got to check out the LOJ reprint, the forward. Check out the forward from the LOJ reprint. Because according to Edward Ullendorf and according to the witness of the stars, the particular arrangement, unique arrangement of stars at the birth of... Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, was also the same formation, right, that was witnessed circa, what was it, 1891, 1891, 1892, according to Edward Bullinger and, and in the Witness of the Stars. I mention all that because when we were talking about the five sister churches, 
right, what's called the Oriental churches, not to be confused with the Eastern Orthodox churches, but the Oriental churches of which the Ethiopic, the Ethiopian church is one of the five sister churches. Those five sister churches point to the branch, the branch in the heavens. And remember Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, Jesus Christus, according to the Nazarene, the original Nazarene is the is is, is his true followers, the true disciples. Remember his, his his title connection name is Yeshua Hanotri, right? The Nazar, right? So according to that, and this is what the Christians and later on people picked up initially. And this is where we get to see the connection of Epiphany in this particular sense right here, that is all connected with the visit of the wise men or the ones who are called three kings. Right, the whole three kings connection, and then it says in some traditions, like the Oriental, um, we say the Oriental churches, right, or theologically they are referred to as the Miaphysite churches, right. The Mi we could say in the sense of the Tawahido, they have the Tawahido faith, right, Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahido church, right. In some traditions, it celebrates Little Christmas, but then what do they call? Jubilees, right? Jubilees, some of the ancient writings and books that were recovered, right, amongst the children of the Ethiopians, right, like Jubilees, is called what? Little Genesis. So there's, a, there's this Ethiopian connection, right, uh, Ethiopian, as the, as the Bible speaks about the Ethiopian connection, right, in many good, some great, Right? There's, there's some judgment. Yes, yes, there's some judgment. Right? There's some judgment. Right? We do have judgment right? against the careless Ethiopians and, and others. Right? But overall, we find more of the verses pointing and connecting to Ethiopia right? in a prophetic sense that from the perspective of Hashem or the Almighty, right? according to the Kavod El, Right, says that they would play and have played a significant role right, in, in the Almighty and Hashem and Jehovah's plan, in the plan of salvation. Right, the plan of salvation right, connected with the, the Israelites and even the Israelites of Ethiopia and also all humanity. And as well as witnessing, watching, working, and witnessing. So this is a powerful witness that we have right here, here, here brothers and sisters so the little christmas it's called little christmas because by this time those who called the other church traditions little christmas were already in 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 um in the big christmas or they already had bought in right to the december 25th solstice kind of that whole connection that had come in later on that it had nothing to do with the birth and you know i'm See, here's where they mix it up. I mean, there's a lot of mix up that they, they do, and we like to get into some of this right here if we can. But like we said, we was doing most of this right here just to zoom in on epiphany, right? To zoom in on the significance of epiphany. And so far, we've been sharing one of the icons, right, commissioned by the King of Kings. Now, let's go through some of this right here and just share some of these icons and maybe just narrate one or two of them. Okay, let's just go through. This is... Okay, this is one version right here. Now, there's a couple of key tells in the, in the narrative, right? We should not confuse, please, brothers and sisters, do not confuse the, the three kings or the, the wise men or the magi with the shepherds and the angels. The shepherd and angel incident, according to a true interpretation of the Bible, happened months earlier, right, during the time of Sukkot. Sukkoth is also known as the Feast of Tabernacles. We can go to the scripture, the Bible, and it points out we can see the time. There's a time difference, there's a season difference, there's even a location difference between what we have here when we come to January 6th, January 7th with Lidet, and what occurred during the, the Feast of Tabernacles right at the end of the year the beginning of we could say the ethiopian hebrew year roughly the september right the september season the september time let's just point put on the map september 11th right according to the solar calendar right and in the ancient ethiopian church ethiopian um kingdom of god church right blessed be the soul of uh, of of um 
you know, the brother from the Nabora Id, right, who had passed away, who did a wonderful work, Ethiopia, Kingdom of God, right? A lot was confirmed, a lot that we learned. And one thing he pointed out to us is that in the older Ethiopic tradition, he was actually appointed by his majesty as the keeper of the holy city of Aksum, right? Kabur, uh, um, 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 Hermes Kabeda Wode Yesus, the brother's name, you know, God bless his soul, you know, the elder, right, who has passed on. But he started a ministry, a work called Ethiopia Kingdom of God. One can still refer to his testimony on this particular subject matter. It's a very, very important testimony on it because it goes to prove that there is an older Ethiopian tradition that points to the fact that September 11th, which also corresponds with, we could say, the Rosh Hashanah, the Yom Teruah, and the, the Judaic, right, um, or the Jewish New Year in the sense of the civil New Year. So we have in Addis Ahmed is the same tradition of the civil New Year as we have the Holy Year, the Ecclesiastical Year, corresponding with Fasika, Fasika or Passover, Pesach roughly around the April, May time. Remember at the beginning we said about time, right? We pointed to time. Time, 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 time. Time is the key, right? Time and timing, you know, the time, the, the connecting of time where possible, right? To have like a timeline, right? So that things do not get mixed up out of time and confused, right? Like a bad dream or a bad high or something like that. You know what I mean? So let's not confuse the three wise men incident, right? The three wise men incident in the Bible is totally separate and is different. It's a different time. It's, it's happening, you could say, in the same relative time period, but it's not happening at the same time. Like, for example, this is a beautiful icon right here, but if these are the three wise men, it's inappropriate. If you say, well, why is it inappropriate? It's inappropriate because you see there's animals there. He was born in a manger, but when the three wise men, right, or not, let me not say three wise men, when the wise men, <laughs> you know what I mean, when the wise men came, right, when they finally, because they were searching, they were searching, they went to heaven, they went to, because in their interpretation of what these heavenly signs meant, you know, Hashemayim, Misaparim, Kabod El, the heavens declare the glory, the Kabod El, they were looking for Emmanuel, right, could they witness the Kabod El? The Kabod El is the glory of El, the glory of the Almighty. Now they are looking for he who is born, right? The, the, the Melech of the Yehudim, right? The Melech of the Jews, the Judahites, the Judeans. So they first went to, you know, the king's house, you know, <laughs> you know, and that's when they encountered um, um, Herod. You recall that within the Gospels. Right? And then if you keep reading in sequence, there's other events that happen, right? In both the, you know, in both of the Gospels, you know what I mean? You know, in the Gospels account, right? There's, a, there, there's, there's events that happen, right? And when you look at these events that happen, that, that's time. That's time. So it's not the same time when we get the first, um, you could say the first appearing, right, to others, Right, of the incarnation is during the September October season, what was corresponding with the September October season. That's why there were shepherds. See, so this really should be the shepherds or the angels, right? Not the wise men, because the wise men, here's the key scripture tell it said that when the wise men came, they visited and they saw the babe, they saw Yeshua, right, in a house. <laughs> You know, need we go over the details, right? But it was the angels, remember it was the angels, right? And the angels had communicated to the shepherds. The shepherds, they were out on the field, you know, they were out in the fields with their flocks, right? Shepherding their flocks when the angels, the angels came and proclaimed to them. And they said, we got to, you know, we got to check this out for ourselves. This is a great, if this is true, this is a great thing. We need to be able to be a witness for ourselves, right? So who are the witnesses, right? The first witnesses when, when Yeshua, when Jesus born, we have the angel, the angel testimony, and we have the shepherd's testimony. Months later, 
we get the wise men testimony. The angel testimony, the shepherd testimony is related to the manger. And in the manger, you had the animals, right? So he was born in a manger. But now the wise men, who no doubt had come from a, around that time, they came early on too, but they had to go around and around and around and look, right? They had to search, right? It appears that when the wise men came, right, no doubt the Messiah was already born. You remember when Herod, you know, was trying to find out like, well, well, oh, the wise men played a trick on me. I told them to come back and I'm going to worship too. But the wise men were peeped by the angel. Notice the angel connection. Why? Well, peep by the angel to return another way. Don't go the same way. Why? Right? Don't go the same way. That, don't go back to Herod. Don't tell them, oh, the address is over here. Don't give Herod, you know, the GPS, <laughs> you know, of Yeshua. Mm -mm. Go another way. And so then when Herod found out that he was mocked, he started to consult with the people around him and say, okay, what did the prophecy say from two years so let's slay all the male children, right, for the past two years. Hmm. For the past two years. So according to the scripture, we do not know, as of yet in our study, we do not know exactly, right, when it was that Herod said, hey, how come those wise men did not come back? The Magi did not come back to I and tell me, you know, I did not tell them such and such. We don't know exactly, but when he consulted, right, with the ones who no doubt had some knowledge of scripture and prophecy. Remember when, when, when the wise men first came, he had to bring the ones who had some knowledge of scripture and they had to say, well, you know, Bethlehem of Judea, so it must be around there. And then that is exactly where Jesus, Yeshua, was born. Right? Even later on in the Gospels, they say, well, he's from Galilee and there's no Messiah that come from Galilee, but must come out of Bethlehem of Judah. That shows that the people even in the time didn't really know. They, they, they saw that he lived over here. He was in residence over here. So they thought that where they found him at that time was where he was born. You know, like, 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 like you now in, in Texas. So I'm, I'm thinking you always was born in, and you must have been born in Texas, but you could have been born in Idaho, you could have been born in another country, you could have been born anywhere. You know what I mean? So they made an assumption. That's what's interesting about the scripts. If we really study the scripts, there's more details there. But there are a lot of ones just studying to find fault with it or, or some crazy stuff. When we are studying it, right, we're studying to learn, to grow, but also to show and prove, you know what I mean, the lies that we have been, you know, maybe made to believe or whatnot like that. So here's a very important icon right here. This icon we'd like to go through more in detail. We've done it before, I think in previous season, I'd like to do this again. But for right now, here's like a kind of a little example of the three kings, right? The three kings. This is a very interesting icon, the three kings. So they're looking for this, for, they saw a heavenly sign, right? They saw a heavenly sign, right? They saw a particular heavenly sign. Okay, right here, here, here. Okay, no, no, let's go around this way right here. Okay, here, right? here this is interesting notice when the bible says the wise men came so you see we have three over here this is an interesting very this is a very beautiful icon this russian icon right here job bless the souls you know you know many of the ones who really preserve this because they you know the bolshevik revolution right in the synagogue of satan wanted to destroy all of this right for for a twofold reason one because we see the ethnicity as black and brown people <laughs> right, right and and secondarily because this is about the messiah right you know what i mean this is about the messiah this is about the holy right because it was about to foist on the world a lie a lie that much of the world we still are, are wrestling we still are in this um we're contending right put it like that we're contending right so you see over here this is in a cave or like we could call it you know like a manger right this over here is in the manger right Right, this is over here is in the manger, and then we just look at all the all, all the sides of the picture. Right, let's look at all the sides. So we have over here, right here, this is like the wise, not the wise men, but this is when 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 Herod, you see the king on the throne. Herod is being with he's consulting to find out like where are the you know where are the um you know where when when and where was the Messiah born? And he said two years. Right, so two years had already transpired. 
Notice that right there, two years. I'm not saying the wise men were traveling around for two years, right? But the wise men did not show up at the cave. The wise men did not show because by time the wise men had like a better GPS, right? And found out that they, they were already back home. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that they, they visited um, his mother and the child at home. Right, so we really have to point that out, and you can see right here, even in the icon, is, is there's a picture like of a house, like a, a kind of a home structure, and you see the three, right? You see the three of them representing the three kings, right? Because the Bible says they came in and they saw the mother, right, and the child. They saw the mother and the child, and thus the classic iconic image: the mother and the child, right? But then over here we get the angels. Right? And there's also within the scripts a connection where the angels in bearing witness to the birth of Emmanuel, Emmanuel with us is El. In other words, incarnated in humanity is the power, right? The power, the same power from the beginning who created man in his image and after his likeness, according to the same Hebrew scripture, Torah now decides, right, to be born into his creation people say some people say oh whoa 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 that's impossible that's not possible what you see that that right there according to the narrative right according to what is written right if we study it it makes perfect it makes perfect sense now people can go into other speculation and reasonings right but we've clarified just a couple of points right here 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 now ones might ask for the scripts on it and it's in the scripture. Look up the wise men. When the wise men came, they visited Yeshua at home. Look at the differences between, these are two different scenes. And even here in this early iconography, you can see the two different scenes are represented, well represented. What's so interesting is that you see how the back of the wise men Right, are to the back of Mardium in the cave. The, but then the, you, you see that how it's two different. It, 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 this is a beautiful icon right here because it really goes through the different, you know, the different scenes, right? The different scenes right here. And then later on, after the wise men came along, right? Look after that, you know, they make tracks, right? Joseph, right? Joseph, Mary, and Yeshua, right? And the few others, no doubt who accompany them, right? Different traditions have different things, but, you know, we look at what the scripts say first and foremostly. They tried it, right, to Egypt and Ethiopia. <laughs> yeah, they tried it to Egypt and Ethiopia, right? So it's important that Ethiopia, one of the places visited by Yeshua, right? Yes, Ethiopia, one of the places visited by, by this then Gilmarim, Yeshua, right? By Mary and, and, and her, her child, all right. Notice it's over here. Even over here, you can see where she is like she's in the cave right there. You see in the cave or, or in the, what do you call it, the manger. All right. You see the scene where Joseph, Joseph had, may have had some doubts or whatever, you know, right over there. So this is a beautiful icon right here because it really lays out. Right. It really lays out. It lays out everything very, very, you know, very, very well, separating scene from scene. Right. Scene from scene. Right? Here's what's interesting, this wise, the wise men at the very top, you, you see this right here, brothers and sisters, at the very top where the star is, right? at the very top where the star is, there's three over here and there's three over there, right? <laughs> which I know tradition says three kings and just respecting tradition, right? okay, three kings, right? God bless be. You know, the power of the three, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, the three kings, we get that right there. But notice there's six of them. It has six of them up there, right? Notice that the, the three over here are pointing to the same star, right? Or a heavenly sign. Now, when it says star, how do we know they're not saying constellation? <laughs> right? How do you know? Right? How do you know they're not saying constellation, right? They're pointing to the same heavenly sign. I'm going to bring more on the betula and the branch because that's also significant within the narrative where it speaks about this man, you know, the man who is known as, you know, the man who is known as the branch, right? So here, 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 Melkam, Ledetu, Adarasachu, you know what I mean? Inquan, Lebrahan. 
in Kwan le le detu baal bedechna derasachu. Congratulations, welcome, welcome. He has brought you, he has caused you to arrive safely in this season, in this time, to the feast of his birth, le le detu baal. To the feast of his birth, here, 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 happy, happy, happy. Right, we say Ethiopian, happy Ethiopian um, Hebrew epiphany. You know what I mean? Happy, happy, happy. You know, Yeshua nativity. Yeshua nativity, Ethiopian epiphany. <laughs> Yeshua nativity, right? The real roots of the of the real Christmas, so to speak, right? Yes, I. Rastafari. Check out the descriptions, like, share, subscribe if you want. Also, check us out at lojs.org. Check out the bookstore if you want to get a copy of Witness, Witness of the Stars, Witness of the Stars. Our reprint, we have a special foreword that speaks of that heavenly sign that kind of continues what Edward um, Bullinger, Bullinger said this heavenly sign that had not been seen since the birth of Yeshua HaMashiach, yes, of Jesus Christ has appeared recently and then I looked at the book and I said oh wow 1892 it was 1891 it was 1891 when the book was you know written you know uh, and put out it was in the 1890s I said Chan that right there was the next the scientific we said the scientific ast astronomical sign concerning the birth of the son of man concerning the man child Right, leads to far right, and and that connection both in the first and the second advent. Panim il panim, face to face. Hey, here, here, panim il panim, face to face, or the faces, right, right, the first and the second advent. Panim il panim, face to face. Chabarim, yes I, shalom Chabarim, shalom Rastafari, salamta t'ena yistelim, weep not behold.